Good morning. It's Thursday, October 24th. I'm Jasmine Anderson. Violent road rage incidents are up on the island. Andrew Anger has a look at how to stay safe in your car in a story you'll see only in Newsday. It can happen in a split second. A road rage incident while in your car. Andrea Gomez says, like many motorists, it's happened to her. I had someone following me the other day. I wasn't going fast enough for him. He swerved around me and gave me the finger and <laughs> called it a day. Police and traffic experts say road rage incidents are on the rise. Sometimes the incidents turn violent, like this one last weekend in West Babylon. It's tough to keep an eye on, so because one, it's moving all the time. Nassau Kenny says it's seen an increase over the last few years. In 2020, Nassau police reported 57 road rage incidents in the county, going up each year to 177 at the end of 2023. So far this year, cops say there have been 169. Uh, we have Operation Overwatch, which is the extra 20 cars that are out there. We have all of our CERT teams, COPE teams, BSO teams, all out there doing enforcement now. The Suffolk Police Department says it does not specifically track road rage incidents. We're seeing these sort of aggressive driving behaviors up nationally and in, in New York, on Long Island. Alex Slatke from the AAA says it recommends its members and all drivers to never engage with anyone who is acting aggressively. If threatened, he says, stay in your car, call 911, or drive to a safe place like a police station. If someone's gonna be dangerous towards you, don't reciprocate. And many motorists I've spoken to agree, not engaging with a driver that's showing signs of road rage is what they do nowadays to make sure they get home safe. I wanna live, I wanna be safe in my car. I love driving, you know, I don't wanna get hit. In Garden City, Andrew Enger, Newsday TV. Andrew, thank you. Read more about the rise in road rage incidents. Click Get More below the Newsday TV video box on our homepage. A child psychologist is being held without bail, accused of distributing child sex abuse images. Federal prosecutors say Renee Hoberman of Plainview exchanged videos of children two or younger being raped. Court records show she works at Life Stands Health in Melville with children up to age 17. The judge called her, quote, a danger to the community. Community members confronted the Bayshore School Board over the sex abuse claims against a former teacher. Residents demanded answers last night at an emotional meeting. Former third grade teacher Thomas Bernagozzi is charged with abusing two of his former students and is accused of abusing several more in civil lawsuits. Residents wanted to know what's being done to protect students in the future. For many decades, our district paid this man to do what he did to our, our children. My friends who have lost their lives, some of them, to either suicide, drugs, alcohol, you name it. It's been awful for every single one of us and all of you as well. You're part of our family. <clears throat> The school board president said eight civil claims against the district involving Bernagozzi have been settled without going to trial. Bernagozzi has pleaded not guilty to the criminal charges and is due back in court next month. Only a Newsday, the food service provider for the bankrupt Harborside Retirement Community wants out. Sodexo Incorporated has requested permission from a federal bankruptcy judge to end its dining services for the Port Washington community. It's citing more than a million dollars in unpaid bills. First in Newsday, you can now take a JetBlue flight from MacArthur to Florida. Starting today, the low-cost airline will operate daily service to Orlando and four weekly round-trip flights to Fort Lauderdale and Palm Beach. Another record for Long Island home prices, the median home price in the third quarter in Nassau and Suffolk excluded the East End was $700,000. That's up from $640,000 in the same period last year. Homes in the Hamptons went for an average price of $1.5 million. On the North Fork, homes sold for just under a million dollars. Newsday Business reporter Jonathan Lamantia explains why house hunters are struggling.
Six in 10 sales on Long Island, excluding the East End, went for above asking price. So that indicates that either you have bidding wars or you have people coming in with their highest and best price, you know, their first offer is above the asking price. And when something that agents told me is that, you know, that has become a lot more common where, you know, a buyer might go to look at properties and they're not going to start by looking at properties that are, you know, at the top of their budget. They're going to look a little bit uh, lower than that and then they're going to you know, offer above asking price to try to get the deal. But one, you know, real estate expert I talked to said it could be a few years before, you know, uh, inventory levels are at the point where buyers feel like they don't have as much competition. Read more about Long Island's housing markets on Newsday.com. Click get more below the Newsday TV video box. We're celebrating the Liberty today. The first time WNBA champions will be honored this morning with a ticker tape parade. The team, along with floats and confetti, will ride up the Canyon of Heroes in Manhattan to City Hall. There will also be a fan celebration tonight at the Barclays Center in Brooklyn. Congratulations. World Series fever is sweeping the island. The owners of local sports memorabilia stores say they've seen a spike in demand for Yankees and Dodgers gear. The hottest sellers, signed jerseys, baseballs, and rookie cards. People get excited when they watch their favorite players um, do well. It always creates a buzz and excitement. And then people naturally want to call and they want to grab a piece of memorabilia. They want to own something. The Yankees and Dodgers face off in game one tomorrow in Los Angeles. Good luck. After a heartbreaking end to the Mets season, the Amazons are ready to make moves. Newsday sports reporter Laura Albanese reports from City Field. Newsday Sports is brought to you by King O'Rourke Automotive Group. The Mets might have been eliminated from the NLCS, but President of Baseball Operations David Stearns indicated today that the future is bright. In a news conference with reporters, he said, quote, the entirety of the player universe is potentially accessible to us. And that's a big deal for the Mets, who have an estimated $180 million coming off of payroll. That means they could be prime candidates for players like Juan Soto or pitcher Corbin Burns. In addition to that, Stearns was asked about his desire to retain Pete Alonso, who he called a foundational piece. While he made no guarantees, he indicated that there was mutual interest for the slugger to return. In addition to that, he's also interested in talks with Sean Manaya, who had a fantastic season for the Mets on the Hill. Whenever the season ends, it's not a lot of fun. Um, it stings. Um, it still stings uh, for me right now, and, and it will for a little while. And it should. That means we care about it. That means we're doing something important. That means we, we made it far enough for it to really hurt. Our success this year does not mean anything for our success next year. We've got work to do and we're eager to build off of this and create the type of sustained competitiveness that this organization deserves, that our fan base deserves, um, and that we believe is attainable. Whatever happens, it's going to be an interesting offseason full of plenty of moves, and the Mets, they've just begun. This has been Laura Albanese reporting for Newsday TV. Thank you, Laura. A spectacular neighborhood is drawing crowds to run Konkuma. Ariel Dollinger has a story you'll see only in Newsday. On weekend nights, people park a mile away to visit this Halloween display in Ronkonkoma. But here's the thing, people live in the house behind me. For the Halloween season, neighbors Richard and Nicole Bullis and Chris and Liz Ciccarelli set up elaborate walkthrough displays on their front lawns. We stopped by during the day to check it out. So this is our haunted kind of cemetery trail. Um, and this is your house? This is my home. This was like, uh, I guess, more of my little guy's envision. Not too, too spooky. I'm more of, uh, I guess, a kid-friendly home. I was nervous, I'll be honest. I'm very easily scared. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, a... <laughs> Neither neighbor charges admission, but both accept donations. The money is donated to the Animal Rescue Foundation and Paws of War. At first, I did it for, like, us and friends and family and then his friends. It just got to be such a big collection that you couldn't see it from the street. And last year started the whole walkthrough. So tell me what this looks like on a Friday, Saturday, Sunday night. Uh, somebody messaged me and said, I'd love to stop by, but I don't feel like waiting on the Disney line. Oh my it God. is literally a line of people down the block, um, cars, traffic. Inviting the public onto private property has not come without complications for Rich. On a recent night, several people lifted barriers to let themselves in. 
The incidents prompted Facebook posts reminding his audience of the rules and announcing that the haunt will be open only on weekend nights. It's got to be upwards of over a thousand people. It's a like, yeah, wow. yeah. It's it's pretty amazing, but also a little nerve-wracking. Visitors can walk from the Bullis property over to the Chicarellis, where there are a carnival theme and a haunted house with live actors. It's part carnival theme is the driveway and a rock band and then we have the haunted barn walkthrough. So now we're walking into the corn stalker area. This is our little pumpkin patch. We have you know the 12 foot skeleton, the inferno. And then this through here. Is haunted, haunted barn. barn. Yep. Haunted yep. Barn. yep. Alright, you ready to walk into the barn? No. No? <laughs> you're not? <laughs> you're into like a strobe area with all flashing lights. You got Art the Clown in there. You got Texas the Chainsaw Massacre. Love the face he's in there. For Newsday TV, I'm Ariel Dollinger. You're almost there. I don't like almost. It. I don't like it. Thank you, Ariel. And there are three other Halloween houses also worth the drive. Take a look. Start a new Halloween family tradition by driving through neighborhoods to check out the spooky decorations. These Long Island homes went all out this year with themed displays worth the drive. A home in Great Neck has transformed into the likes of a horror museum with characters like the Pumpkin King and an evil scarecrow out front. Ooh, and it's a skeleton graveyard in Wontaw where more than 25 skeletons are out on the front lawn, some over 12 feet tall. Careful when driving in Yapping there are animatronic characters on the front lawn of one home that just might reach out and grab you. For more on all these homes and more about Halloween on Long Island, go to Newsday.com. Click Get More below the Newsday TV video box. Here's what's up on Long Island. Head over to the Haunted Car Wash. Stay in your car and experience costume characters scattered throughout the car wash with special lighting for Halloween while getting your car cleaned. It's this weekend at the Washville Car Wash in Amityville. Check out the bats, barnacles and broomsticks Halloween party. There's trick-or-treating, vendor tables, games, and prizes at Long Island Aquarium. It's Saturday night in Riverhead. For mission info and more events, click Get More below the Newsday TV video box on our homepage. Newsday TV presents a conversation with Mike LaPetri as the candidate answers questions about the issues affecting Long Island and the 3rd Congressional District. Action speaks louder than words. Now streaming on Newsday TV at newsday.com slash vote. Checking out your hyperlocal Thursday forecast. Today we will feel, feel like fall, which is a good thing. Thanks to cooler weather, just grab your favorite sweater. Checking out your day planner. A mix of sun and clouds today. Highs in the upper 60s. Tomorrow, sunshine with highs in the low 60s. So another opportunity to wear your favorite fall fashions. Here's a look at your seven-day forecast. Long Island weather is brought to you by PTRC. I'm Jasmine Anderson. Thank you so much for watching.